changing the culture so that it is engaging and supportive for everyone, which was the first thing you need to do on my list of three things. I mean, it's, it's easy to say it's possible to do it, but it actually takes a lot of thought and learning. If you look at the, the students graduating from high school with a high academic record and high SAT scores, um, it's half and half male and female, right? So there are just as many women graduating with great scores in math and in science and physics, and so on and so forth, as there are men. One of the things that uh, I feel really horrible about in the United States, and I'll just say I'm Canadian by birth, though I am a US citizen now, um, the public schools, the vast majority of the public schools in this country suck. And it's just awful because, and it's not, it's really not about the teachers. And I'll just say that in California, because of Prop 209, they have a lot less latitude, the public um, universities have a lot less latitude in terms of granting scholarships um, <coughs> to people of color or to women, for that matter. Yeah, I'm paid for this by Jeff. <laughs> um, <laughs> And so it makes it much harder to compete for those students. So, so one of the things we had to do was we had to, first of all, figure out what made African-American families and what made Hispanic, Latinx families choose where their son or daughter was gonna go. And what we found out to our surprise, I mean, if you were a marketing person, or you would have done this research in the beginning. It took us like eight years to do the research, but still, we finally got it done. We found to our surprise that African-American families in general, this is a generalization, so it's false in particular instances, but in general, they want their kid to go to the best, best known place that they got into. And since we're competing with places like Stanford and MIT, and we're not very well known, we had to dramatically increase our visibility nationally and also our visibility within African-American communities. Latinx families, they want their kids to go close to home. And Claremont is in Los Angeles County, which is 70% Hispanic. But what did I just say about public schools? So what we had to figure out was how we could actually admit a student from a crappy high school that might be five miles or two miles from our campus and ensure that they would thrive at Harvey Mudd, which meant that we had to put in a ton of extra support for all of our students, because we don't want to stigmatize the students. I mean, there's a lot of talk about the deficit model. The last thing we want to do is to be welcoming students of color, or any students, into our college and be saying, okay, you're less well prepared, so you know, therefore you have to do X, Y, and Z. So what we want to do instead is we want to say, Everybody gets more support. And I, as I said, we're not perfect, uh, but we did recently do a study of the impact of race and preparation on how our students do in our core courses, which is what's required for students to do. And in the course, and on average, it's about responsible about for only 11% of difference in grades, which is really low, and in math, it's only responsible for 3%, which is amazing since math tends to be the area where we generally see the most difference.